100%. I want to shake up the conversation a little bit. We've got um, the man, the myth, the legend, Warlock Enki calling in um, to join the big brains here talking about the future of Hedera and all that good stuff. Let's get charged up. How you, how you doing, man? We're, I, I saw you were on a HBAR Foundation Spaces doing a, a clinic on content creation. How was that? I, I was, you know, I had to come in late because I was, uh, my, my job, is, regular boy job, is, is not to pretend to be a bald man with a speech impediment. <laughs> Uh, my, my regular job is I, I work uh, like Brady for a lending protocol. It's on the Flare network. Um, so I had a meeting with Flare, the, the people behind the network at 11. So I had to come in a bit late. Um, but I was able to say, I think, three or four sentences, which was really exciting. Nice. Um, and then I had to immediately leave for a live stream with King Solomon where I was repping Kinetic and, and showing people, uh, hey, you know, this is a real thing. Take them to the interface. Uh, explaining a little bit because a lot of people, um, uh, DeFi hasn't really started on Flare, um, so it's uh, a lot of people don't know much of, of things. It's not like uh, Hedera where you had like what like years before Lightning Protocol shows up. Um, like you know, DeFi starts and then there was so much time before we got to our other primitive, which didn't really make sense. Um, with uh, with Flare, it's kind of like all trying to happen around the same time, which is which is exciting, but a lot of education is needed. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's oracles were never available um, on Hedera until just this year, which uh, I don't want to don't want to sound too negative or whatever. But you know, it's, uh, going back to the concept of council, having Chainlink on the council, you know, it was it's wild to me that that. Yeah. uh wasn't heavily prioritized initially um super um uh happy that you know we've got supra and, and pyth oracles now and um my understanding is, is chain is still in the works but we'll see um so yeah definitely uh, again bullish on this new sort of era that, that we're coming to the having those oracle integrations definitely opens the door to a lot yeah i think that was really weird um on the council for half a decade and didn't build anything. You know, I think that that we've heard many people on the council, such as Rob Allen and different stuff like that, kind of like, you know, let's build some stuff on this network that you own, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah, and, a lot of people blame yeah. Chainlink for that. Um, and uh, I'm sure that Chainlink's integration costs are not cheap, mm. right? Uh, but I think that the main reason Chainlink hasn't been integrated yet, it's probably, like you said, in the works. Uh, you know, I, I would say now that we have other oracles, it's almost certainly in the works because it is silly. Uh, I think it's probably they didn't want to write that check. And that ties back to kind of the core thing of all of our problems, which is they did not think they needed retail. Mm. Like right. at all. <laughs> Yeah, right. initially. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Past, What's interesting, right? though, is like we're starting, we're already seeing like, um, you know, even if you can claim that you don't need retail, there are many enterprise applications and use cases that need oracles. Um, so I'd argue even then, like, you know, you, you still, there, there should be a recognition. Maybe they didn't need them right at the time and there wasn't anyone building anything related to oracles. And so that was why, but, um, but, you know, t talking about sort of the, the maturing and evolution of these different um, components of, of blockchain, you know, oracles is absolutely one that will continue to proliferate and be a, a key primitive for, both retail, obviously, today, but then also enterprise adoption in the future. You, you have to have that. Um, and, and something yeah. that people miss is that uh, enterprises use things built for retail, right? Like like you're talking about. We know enterprises use Hashpack, for example. Um, and we know, more importantly, that uh, if we don't get a giraffe within the next few months, uh, Hedera <laughs> is dead. <laughs> dead in the water this is this is true it's a fact it's a fact if we if in you know i'm not talking about oh we're gonna donate to some foundation no we want a physical giraffe not something digit we're not talking about a 3d model 
we want a giraffe, folks. I want to be able to touch it. I want to be able to pet it. I want to see them spots with these eyes, buddy, not through a screen. No, 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 no. You could have gotten off easy earlier, okay? Hedera, HBAR Foundation, Swirls, the, the DLT Science Foundation that nobody knows what you do. You could have gotten off early, uh, easy early if, if, you, if you acted on this, right? No, we want a giraffe. You're lucky I'm saying just one, okay? Wow. We want a real one. We all need someone to look up to, okay? We need some leadership. Yeah. And who better than someone with a blue prehensile tongue, right? Okay, so deliver, deliver the giraffe for us. No, it's. I think. I think that for me, this is the part. This is the part that I don't think the governing councilor Hedera gets is like the power that lies in the Hedera Twitter account changing their profile picture to a giraffe, like. You know what I mean? It's like, it's stuff like that, that I think just, they don't have the juice for that of just like, that's what's required in crypto is like a wholesome chaos. You know what I mean? Like you have to have that. And I hope that Hedera is, is getting the muscles to be able to do stuff like that and not kind of be like, well, we can't change our profile picture to a giraffe because of regulations. And it's like those types of things. It doesn't even make any sense. Like <laughs> yeah. that's, What's what's Gary going to say? <laughs> I don't like giraffes. <laughs> what the hell is this? Like, what do you think's going to happen? Do you know what the laws are? Like a lot has actually been clarified and you're operating off of like old stuff. Stop LARPing as a as a Fortune 500 tech company. You're not one, buddy. And you certainly aren't running as well as one. What are you doing? Where are you? What company is this? This is Web3. This is where random garbage happens. This is where like money is free, right? The entire point of cryptocurrency is that money is, is unshackled from all the middlemen and all the fucked up financial institutions that are constantly collapsing all around us. You are in a chaotic, bleeding edge technology space. You talk about how great your technology is, how good it, it is for all these things, but you don't understand where you are. How's that gonna, how's that gonna match up? right? People are like, oh, you know, the best tech always wins. No, it does not. Enterprises <laughs> are not focused on getting the best tech, by the way. That's why you see subway lines running off of Windows XP still. They use what works. It costs so much money to get their entire system, even if it runs poor or slow, they don't really care about that as long as the customers are happy. It, it costs so much money, so much education, so much changing of personnel, getting employees up to speed to change to a new system. Do you think they want to change to bleeding edge, fast, super high transaction speed stuff? No, that's why we have to pay them. That's why enterprises make Hedera no money. You know where the money comes from? Retail. The amount of people that don't understand that the bags of the H bar that, I mean, people at Hedera, like a lot of them don't understand that the H bar they get to sell every month and they love it is on the backs of retail. We paid for that. We're paying for that. You know, this isn't like, oh, my taxes go to, I'm, I'm the president's boss. Like we are, we're the lifeblood, bro. We're the entire reason this thing can even keep chugging along and you need to figure out where you are and you need to stop pretending that you're Google. Google may be on the council, but you're not Google. Google may be, you may be paying them to put their logo up. You're not Google. Okay. And, and to, to, to touch on what Brady was saying earlier, I don't know if they understand. They don't understand where they are. They don't understand what Web3 is. And a lot of them don't care. Okay. So <clears throat> where do we go from here? So the, 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 the thing is, is I think that, that is the emotion I think that a lot of people are having. Um, and I think it's healthy because again, if we take a step back, I think that there's quite a few networks that experience this situation of like, wait, who are we? You know, like a bit of an identity crisis in a way. I think it's a healthy thing. I think it's one of those inflection points that is, is these kinds of make or break moments that happen. And what Hedera is dealing with is kind of like an identity crisis. I, to me, 
when I saw that kind of committee instated by the, excuse me, Jesus Murphy, I'm getting too worked up here. Let's when I saw that on three, <laughs> when, when I saw the committee from the governing council be, be instated to find the new president and then Charles came on board and stuff to me, that was initially kind of like a sign of like, okay, there's going to be some shakeup in leadership in some kind of way. We're seeing more shakeups in leadership um, at Swirls, at Hedera, all these different types of things. And when we talk about leadership, I think what uh, very often a lot of the conversation has to come back to the governing council. Um, we we talk about potentially problems that happen at um, <clears throat> you know um, different organizations in the ecosystem or all these different types of things. But I do think that a lot of this comes back to the governing council. And our point here is, does the governing council have the ability to navigate this kind of stuff, to navigate this type of identity crisis? And the the, the plus side to me is what, what says to me that they do, that they're at least a little self-aware is going, um, we need to bring in someone at the top who knows, right? And to me, that is a self-awareness that I, that, that was really positive for me because I'm like, okay, here's this organization that doesn't really know what's going on. And when I saw that search, it was like, they're saying like, we don't know what's going on. And I think that's a really kind of a healthy thing. I think that to the governing council's credit, I think that they're more self-aware than we give them credit for. And I hope that that's what Charles is doing is leveraging that and saying like, okay, guys, maybe we don't quite know what's going on, but I do. And there are people that do that we can bring in. And so I think that that's, that's kind of what makes me feel like it's this kind of end of an era for Hedera is we've got the community kind of going, ah, you know, like what's going on? Who are we? Like what's happening? And, and maybe feeling like they got the short end of the stick or whatever, which is, I think in some ways a fact. And that's really what drives change and what brings forth a new era. But I do think that you got to wrap this one up. You got to end this era. And I think we're going to start to see some stuff based off of you know, conversations I've had, even Rob Allen on the H bar sh bull show stuff. He said it, 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 it's a very stark change in how they describe the governing council and the organization. And I think it, it, it brings some relief to some people. I do think it like freaks a lot of people out as well. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, things, things will, things will get better. And I trust Charles behind Charles all the way. Um, he, but he is one person, right? And he's coming into this thing that's been built. A lot of things with the governing council, with the HBAR Foundation, with the Hashgraph Association, with everything, with Swirls, with Hedera, a lot of things were not set up correctly. And part of that is excusable. Part of that is they didn't know, right? You know, we have to give people a little bit of grace when it comes to we are in la la land. We are in bleeding edge technology, weird world. We are in, are in the evolution of money, right? So a lot of stuff you don't know, but you have to be open and receptive to change and you have to have people you can listen to. Thank the, the Lord above. They have Charles to be like, no, that's stupid. No, that's not what we should do. We need people to buy H bar. What? We have to care about the price of H bar? Yeah. Yes. If you're going to sell that much of it, yeah, you should care about the price of H bar. Yeah. I thought it was just free money. No. <laughs> no, apparently not, man. It's apparently it's not free money. Somebody had to pick up the bill. I know you're all elites, right? And you're not used to that right? It just comes out of the magic account that daddy has. But believe it or not, somebody has to pick up that bill. So thank God we have Charles. We need more. And unfortunately, this whole thing is going to be a systemic issue that needs to be slowly changed over time. Because a lot of things, you know, sorry, Mance, sorry, whoever was the brainchild. I know you made stuff up. I know you were flying by the seat of your pants because that's what humans do. Right. That's what humans do when they don't have information. They don't know what to do. And they're a completely new field. The amount of stuff that I've tried that's failed because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I do that every week. I get it. But it's been enough time that if the community has to come up and be like, stop it, you need to stop. You need to stop and listen. OK, 
Yeah. Like I, you don't, yeah, don't, I, you shouldn't have to listen to a Grelf. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brady. I know Brady, you shared something on this. Uh, I'm going to bring it up on screen, but I know you kind of wanted to speak to something. So I want to throw it to you. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, I, and I agree in the sense that, you know, you can't keep trying the same thing over and over again, expecting new results. If something's not working and clearly certain things aren't, the change has to take place and you have to move fast. The market is incredibly fast. And, um, you know, if there is no sense of urgency and ability to execute quickly, then you're ultimately going to fall behind. And, and um, truly, it needs to operate more like a startup than like a large, slow moving enterprise um, in order for us to be successful. And yeah, I think, um, you know, related to maybe the sentiment of this call and the sentiment that we're seeing across the entire ecosystem, there's this um, posting by Vitalik that I, really resonates with me um, in the sense that, you know, we are ultimately a decentralized network. Decentralization is a core tenant of the Hedera network and something that I, I do think that, that people believe in. Um, and, you know, he's saying here, and I'm, I'm really proud that Ethereum does not have a culture of trying to prevent people from speaking their minds, even when they have negative feelings towards major things in the protocol or ecosystem. Um, some wave uh, the idea of open discourse as a flag and some take it seriously. And I, and I think, you know, this call today is probably a good example of that. Uh, and there's many, many examples of that that have been taking place, you know, over the last six months and, and more where, where um, people should be able to freely speak their minds. And, and that sort of allows everyone to come to um, the best consensus that we can in terms of, of direction. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that, that folks are, are freely able to do that. Yeah, I share that. We got a question too. Someone says, uh, Paul, always a listener of the show. Shout out, Paul. He says, what major enterprise use cases live on Solana or Ethereum? I understand the importance of retail, but with tribalism and Web3, siphon siphoning off retail from networks is tough. What is the catalyst for this? So I guess this is kind of a question of like, well, what are other, are other networks seeing success in enterprise and how do we siphon off that into well, Hedera? Right. And and I think the, the big thing is, again, going back to the maturity of the market, Enterprise just isn't ready yet for full-fledged use cases, but and and retail adoption and innovation is what's going to drive maturity of these technologies to allow enterprises long-term to be able to collapse into them. We are seeing a lot of proofs of concept that are taking place, not just on Hedera, but across other ecosystems as well. But those proofs of concept aren't driving, um, you know, sustainable revenues for the network. Uh, sustainable amounts of transactions. It's it's a lot of playing with the technology in an unmature state, um, and a lot of times a marketing play too for some of these these large organizations that are trying to position themselves as being forward thinking, etc. Um, a big one was Polygon CDK recently. Polygon um, uh, has uh, Fox uh, Fox Corp now um, launching a layer two network using CDK. Uh, for it looks like sort of verification of um, of news, um, which was interesting. And so, you know, other other organizations are are definitely looking to these other um, other chains as uh, as a tool that they can they can adopt and utilize. And um, again, you know, we've heard directly from enterprises that they. Uh, sometimes don't choose Hedera because there is not a strong retail user base. And we saw that with, um, you know, large, uh, large organizations that were trying to do, for example, like NFT launches for their products during that era of NFTs, you know, talking to Mercedes and some other organizations, mm -hmm. they say, well, why, why Hedera? And you can go through the tech list all day long. And obviously, yeah, the tech is great. There are so many benefits to building on Hedera. But at the end of the day, again, it goes back to what's our total addressable market for what it is that we're trying to launch. We're trying to resonate with these forward thinking web three people. And if that group doesn't exist on the network that they're launching on, then they're not getting the exposure that they want. It's not worth the investment. It's not worth the value. And so retail is important to summarize it up is, is we're seeing that it's important for, for the ecosystems that we're playing in. It's important for enterprises. It's important for the long-term viability and, I really, I, I do think that the narrative is shifting and I really hope 
that we see like majorly impactful change from the top down um, across the board around this. And so I'm very hopeful. We definitely need a reset. I want to expand on. Hold on, you Jake. Wait one second. Your mic. Your mic's coming. It's crackling. Hold on. I, it's crackling. <laughs> sounds like you're calling in from like the, the Apollo mission. Oh no! <laughs> well, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> sounds like a voice modulator. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I mean, <laughs> mm, give me a sec. Okay. Or it sounds like when you have your when you had your cell phone like back in the day next yeah. to your speakers and the speakers crackled before a phone call came through it like predicted a text message or a phone call. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like an aux cord or something is. Good? Say something again. Are we Are we okay? We're good. We're good now. I knew. I know what it. I know what it was. It's a latency issue. You know, it is what it is. You expand on something you said, um, which is. Here's a little secret for everybody. If you have a meeting with, uh, you know, a big company, let's say, let's say it's, it's, it's Apple. Everybody wants to talk to Apple. You have a meeting with them and uh, they say, uh, yeah, we can do something with Hedera. Maybe in 10 years, we'll do something with Hedera. You publish that article that day. You say Hedera is <laughs> working with Apple. Oh, it's in 10 years. Oh, there's no contract sign. Oh, there's like actually no indication that they'll follow up on that. <laughs> but we had the meeting, baby. That's the case with everything. That's the case with every single announcement uh, with everyone, not just Hedera, everybody, because that's what you do, right? We have, we, we're not going to get in, tr we're not lying. We're not going to get in trouble for, for lying completely can we is there any kind of technicality we can say that there's a partnership it's why you say people who are using amazon cloud are like we're partnering with amazon <laughs> what, you, no they said we could use them that's a partnership like everybody does that that's a little secret so they may say like we're working with all these big companies maybe they haven't talked to them in six months mm. doesn't matter doesn't matter we had that meeting that is all across the board. That's something you have to understand. Something else that you touched on, we're the perfect, as far as like, what's the catalyst for, for, for us being good for, for retail? We're the perfect network for retail. We're the best network for retail. All the stuff that retail is actually doing, all the things, this is why Solana is successful. I mean, you can say they're stupid and their network farts and, and nobody likes it and they smell bad. Uh, the reason they're successful is because they're investing in what people are doing right now. They're not investing in what's 10 years into the future. That What a great business model. Oh, let's have a 100-year company. We don't have to worry about making profit for 99 years. <laughs> what a great idea. What a great thing to say. Dumb, all right? So you want to invest. You want to do what people are doing right now. If you have a business, if you want to make money, right? You invest in what people are actually doing. You're not trying to predict what people are going to want to be doing in five years, you want to you wanna invest in what they're doing right now. Hedera is fast, efficient, cheap, has fair ordering, right? It works good. It works better. What does it work better for? Uh, some imaginary thing that might happen at some point? Or, hey, maybe it could work better for what people are doing right now. That's how we steal, right? That's how we steal market share. That's how we steal mind share. That's how we steal people, users, attention from other networks is by investing in what people are doing right now what people are using the cryptocurrency networks right now, what they're using for the technology right now. And we have a fantastic network for it. Really good. Um, but we need to, oh, I don't know, uh, let people know that it exists. We do no marketing. We're recycling the like three years old Hasker commercial with stock footage of people holding up colored beakers because that's what science is. And it's just a montage of stock footage that they bought and a voiceover. They couldn't pay a professional guy. They had to pay the, the marketing guy they hired who doesn't even work at Hedera anymore. That's what we're going to show with millions of eyes on Hedera for Karate Combat. Oh, Karate Combat sponsored by Hedera. We're not going to have the word Hedera on the ring anywhere. It's just an H, guys. What am I going to Google? H? Weird looking H? H with an extra line? 
It's the same thing with Davos. They had the they had the backdrop with just the stupid H symbol. What does that mean? No, nothing to 99.999% of the population. It means nothing. There's basic marketing stuff. I don't want to hear shit about legislation, regulation, whatever. There's basic marketing stuff. Putting Hadera's name on things that is already there. You're already doing some kind of marketing, but you're doing it poorly. Uh, going forward from that, you need to set up a separate foundation that's not in the U.S., right? Set up a specific, not a grant giving foundation, a foundation, this is what other cryptocurrency networks do, that specifically handles marketing. It's decentralized from Hedera, but its job is essentially to be funded and do marketing for Hedera, where they don't have to worry about Gary showing up and shining them in the eyes with the reflection off his big old bald head and blinding them. So you don't have to worry about that. People don't know about Hedera. They don't yeah. know that it's good. And more importantly, saying, ooh, tech is good, ooh, tech is good, is, is nebulous, it's ambiguous, it attracts no one, right? It attracts the like five people that watched like an eight hour long YouTube deep dive and found themselves here. <laughs> Us weirdos, we're stuck in the insane asylum, but we need more crazy friends to come over and the tech thing's not bringing them. It shouldn't be just the, 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 the responsibility of the community to do this anyway, right? But we, we need to talk about experiences. We need to talk about the cool stuff that's happening. We need to show people this is a fun place to be. You've got me. You've got Brandon. You've got Brady. That's something, right? You got three freaks. Let's set the freak show up, baby. Let's get some people in the tent. Sell yeah. some tickets. Let's go, dude. I'm I'm pumped. And, and like, just on the note on the logo, this was something that people were sharing in the ecosystem. It was like Elon trying, I guess, beer for the first time, and the beer brand is the Hawkstone one with the Dara logo. So, oh, so and, um, Hawkstone uh, sponsored Karate Combat. Yes, and it appears, unfortunately, the first interaction Elon's having with this logo is with a beer that I I don't think he likes. Um, so I guess, I don't know, <laughs> lawsuit incoming, but, um, yeah, that it's, it's, that's exactly the point. Uh, Jake, it's like when it comes to the marketing stuff, it, that's the other thing that things come down to it, right? It's like marketing. The marketing for Hedera is like not, um, you know, strong. <laughs> well, and I, I can comment, I can comment on that. I think is, um, you know, the way that, that being a marketer for the last, and 12 years now. Um, marketing does an amazing job of amplifying the narratives that take place internally and the activities that are taking place at any organization. And marketing can, can most of the time only be as good as the vision of the organization that the marketing team is operating for and the internal um, you know, activities that are taking place as part of that, the products that are being built, the things that are being done strategically that tie up into that vision, it comes down to marketing where they then craft a narrative where when there is something new, let's build that narrative about how it ties back up to the overarching vision of the org, how it complements the strategy that we've created. And I think a big problem, you know, and I, I, can, can say I experienced this working there is, is um, the confusion by the community around the narrative of what's being stood for is an internal confusion as well. And I think everybody has that same sort of, uh, you know, lack of, of concrete understanding. And so I think that needs to be in place first and there needs to be a stake in the ground around that. And then the marketing related activities can follow because they have something that guides them around the vision that, that, the, um, that is set by the, by the network, by the organization. And that's not, not just a Hedera thing, that's, that's for any organization that exists, that has a marketing department. Um, they can only be as good as what's happening internally and they sort of really act as amplifiers of that. Um, so that's my, I'll get off my soapbox. That's my piece with regards to my. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's great points. And someone left a comment here too, that I pulled up, which is like the main detriment to retail adoption is the perception 
of centralization, crypto retail is all virtue investing and Hedera is viewed as not not virtuous. And I think that kind of hits the point here is like we're talking about not just um, building infrastructure for things people are doing right now and not thinking too far in the future, but also like doing like doing things that place Hedera as part of the conversation right now versus Stop, like stepping too carefully because how I view it is, you know, when, when the dust settles and this industry is, you know, fully mature and let's say Hedera makes it to the top 10 and everything's going gravy. It's like, everybody's going to have this, these crazy battle scars of getting there that will be a source of pride for these communities and these companies and networks. And like, do we want Hedera to just be this kind of like shiny unscathed thing just still removed from that shared experience it's like the reality is is that for networks and your business in general is like getting fined getting in trouble breaking the rules it's marketing expense like that's really like when we talk about marketing we're talking about communication um, and sometimes communicating effectively to a particular group means doing something that maybe your target audience isn't like a huge fan of. And that sometimes it's okay. Like good branding and good awareness can operate independently. Like you can have great awareness that isn't great branding, but it generates awareness. And my example of what if Hedera changed their profile picture to a giraffe? It's like, is that great branding? Probably not. But does it get awareness? Sure. Because people go like, uh Oh, something's, something's wrong at Hedera. Why is this happening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's the energy that you got to tap into because then you can do some great branding stuff with like ad spots and build this tension, ride a bit of tension. But if you're constantly playing it so safe and your goal is to not get too much of a reaction, you're just not going to get that awareness. Like if you want awareness, you're going to have people freaking out, you know? Here's the thing. Okay. You know, we say like, oh, they're playing it safe. I don't think they're playing it safe. I think they're playing it lazy. They're not I'm hungry. So, so sorry, guys, to interrupt. I, I got to jump real quick. No worries, Brady. Thanks absolute, so much. I just have a meeting pleasure. right now. But thank you so much for having me on. Cheers. Take care, guys. Thank you. Brady's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think they're hungry, man. I don't think they want to eat anyone else's lunch. I think they're like, no, my mom packed this for me. I'm fine. <laughs> it's got all my favorite food groups. I'm good. Uh, maybe it's because they're playing with other people's lunch money. I mm -hmm. don't know, but they're not hungry, man. Uh, you know, I, I talked to Charles, he's hungry, right? Yeah. He sees there's potential. He's like, wow, we're top 30 and we have no marketing at all. Yeah. This is going to be, we will get it in the bag. This is going to be easy. And then he comes in and he's probably like, oh, the hell's going on. Right. This I okay, talking about communication. This is something me and you talk about all the time. Yeah. And something that is not, you know, we well, we're on the bleeding edge of tech. Web3 is different, you know, what I talk about all the time. Um, something that's not tied to technology is the culture around communication in Web3. And Hedera is not tapping into that. You know, uh, you've talked about this, I've talked about this. You can go, I want to talk to the head of a project uh building on this network, any network not Hedera, Web3. You go into their Discord, go into their Telegram. You can just talk to that guy. That is not a thing anywhere else. You can't even do that with bands most of the time, right? There's there's barriers. People are terrified. Um, and, and Hedera in their PR and their communication, you know, not just Hedera, every, all of them, all of the, the conglomerate that's super decentralized, but I'm sure if you looked at their Google Calendar, you'd find it wasn't. Uh, those people aren't playing the 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 culture of web3 the culture of today right their communication is so important because they'll get they'll let you get away with so much we want to help you right we are investors in you we believe in you already you've got us already talk to us right you you want us to excuse you want us to understand you have a direct line baby you don't need to put out a crafted PR statement that, you know, you probably paid way too much to hire a firm to help you craft because it, right. it comes off as tone deaf. It comes off as 
you've got gloves and then an oven mitt and then something else on top and it's wrapped in tinfoil. You're not touching us, bro. Yeah. We can't feel you. We don't know what the hell's going on. And if you don't have that close communication, right? Number one, you can't control a narrative with your community. That's why the community's fucking spinning out, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right now. And to, to say that that's not happening, obviously you're, you know, you've got your head in a hole. The community's spinning out right now because you, 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 we don't know, we don't know where you are. We don't know who you are. We can't feel you. We can't react to you. We can't even talk to you. All these, all these meetings and, and stuff, you know, you throw, you throw the H bar bull Brandon out there as a buffer. Like, mm -hmm. let's talk to you, man. Let's not yeah. talk to a contractor. Where are you guys? Talk to us. <laughs> like we want to like forgive and forget and we want to understand, but you have to meet us there. Grelf said this, that guy, uh, but it's very clear that you're afraid. Mm. And you're never if you, if you are in a relationship, this ties into romantic friendship. Otherwise, if you're in a relationship and one of the main emotions you're feeling is fear, it's never, never mm. going to work because you can never get to a place of comfort and you can never get to a place of security. If fear is a large part of your relationship, then it becomes a hostage situation, right? right. Then it becomes Stockholm syndrome. That's when fears evolve the relationship. And there's a lot of fear here. Are we the villain? Is the community the villain? This should not be a discussion. We're in this together. But I know, and we all know, that we are seen as this separate little pocket. And even some people in the community are like, it's just a bunch of people complaining on Twitter. Right. It's not real. What's real is that the random guys on Twitter hold uh, millions of dollars that they bought in HR. Yeah. That's what's real, bro. Yeah. yeah, they complain on Twitter, but there's a massive amount of money that that several people in the community hold and they're angry, right? And it's mostly because we can't connect with you. Please connect with us. Yeah. And and also too, it, it's like there is multiple layers. Like if you if you do want to illustrate it as layers of like, okay, we got, you know, we got crazy retail people down here, and then you've got um, you know, other people with more money, like, oh, those retail people don't matter. It's like the people way, way up that, you know, you know, do a, open a, you know, three quarter million dollar long on H bar at lunch or something. It's like the, the, the truly like big H bar whales that have been here, the OGs that were hype on it being patented and stuff. It's like the reason those people are in the position they're in is because they can change. They can see those narratives. And those are the people above all of this that are like, what are they doing? They got to change that. They got to pivot. They got to go retail. It's like, there's just, there's realities. And then I do feel that like, there's a lot of age barbarians that just kind of want to cling to the past. I mean, you know, I'll be the first one to say like, it was fun. Like scrapping around on go mint and minting NFTs and a Google form and who's the next governing council member. And we got a hundred TPS and like, all like that stuff is so fun and it was so special and it was so unique. Um, and we, and we had a great run up to 40 cents. Like it was just with hardly anything. And, and that does speak to the technology that does speak to the quality of the community. But what you're getting at is like to really drill down on it. It's like Hedera is drastically underutilizing the community. Like it's not for me, it's not so much a conversation of like, um, we got to get together. We got to do these things. It's like, Someone's got to say, like, Hedera, like, use these people. <laughs> like, like, we're also just saying, like, use me. Like, like, we, like, we, we, there's so much energy in this community. And, and I think it, like, goes even deeper than that of, like, they, they, they maybe don't realize it. And I think it's because of, like, the concept of, you know, we talk about, you know, Hedera thinks they're an enterprise when they're not. They're a startup. And, like, one of the core tenets of startups is dog fooding. It's the act of using your own products to grow your business like a great example is like you look at com startup companies like Squarespace or Stripe or Airbnb or all these different types of things. It's like those companies grew through using their products, right? Product led growth. And I think that if you want to go way, 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 way deep down where I think the problem lies really deep down is in any company, if leadership doesn't use the products their company builds, you got problems, right? Because 
that's really what it comes down to. If the people making the decisions, if the people governing the network, if the people doing these types of things like haven't purchased NFTs with their Kabila wallet or hash pack or blade wallet or whatever it is that they haven't gone on these different DEXs, if they haven't tried to these different things, if they haven't had these experiences, if they haven't, you know, even bought some H bar, like, you've got a real problem. Like for me, that's really what it all drills down to is if you're the leader of a company and you don't use the products your company makes, you will fail. That's just the reality of it. There is not a successful startup that had leadership that didn't use their own products. And, and very commonly, the mentality of a startup is we're just gonna build stuff we want. And I think at the beginning, that was the healthy aspect of Hedera. It was a bunch of enterprises together and they're like, hey, we're gonna build stuff we want. And they did. And I think that's gonna work really well for enterprise, but it takes time. What do we do in the meantime? And the the the, the leadership, I just don't think uses retail stuff. They're not maybe crypto natives. A lot of the governing council representatives you know, or, you know, it's, it's someone from the CTO's office, the crypto guy or whatever. And it's like, that's how this stuff starts out. But, you know, it can't just be checking a box. It's like, you're, you're building something. And I, and, and that's, I think the most unfortunate part of it is like, not only are we talking about all, all these different potential problems, it's like, maybe they don't realize like how cool the network actually is. Like, that's the other side to it is like, maybe they feel like way far behind than they actually are. Like, do you think that could be something where they maybe don't realize how far along things have come on the network with very little and they're, and it could be a wake up call if they just, you know, <laughs> logged on and bought some H bar and tried some stuff. I, I think that there's, and of course I'm not speaking about everyone. I don't know everyone in these organizations. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that don't know a lot of things. There's a lot of people that are, you know, they're very good with programming. They're very, they're technologists, right? Um, and they're not concerned with all this other stuff. But you do have to try and eat some of your own dog food. Uh, I think if there's there's the fear element, there's also the the elitism element, which yeah. unfortunately is an aspect. I, I think that we've all seen it we've all heard it right we've I'm, guil all, I'm guilty of it like you have to be able to like recognize like i i was and and in some ways still am a person where my brain is like oh hedera is better you know hedera is this hedera is better like we also have to not pretend that like we weren't all there at some point it's it's i'm just as guilty of that of of having that elite elitism of of being an H barbarian. It's like, I was very elitist and it's through using the network, learning about new primitives, diving into stuff, learning about other networks. You kind of just go, Oh wow, this is so much bigger than Hedera. Hedera truly has a place in something massive. Um, and Hedera is not special enough to get a shortcut to the top five. It's like, we will just have to go through the same trials and tribulations and pains and fines and bruises. Yeah. You need to work. Yeah, that every other you, network you need has. to work. Yeah, you need to put in effort. the The, the thing that I see it, it's lazy thinking, right? Mm. Anytime this isn't just crypto, this is anything in your life. If you say to yourself, and please don't ever do this, uh, we all do it sometimes. Say, I've got it all figured out. Mm. I understand this. You can't even fully understand wood, right? Right. There's a million things with just wood, with just the literally basic building block of construction. You're never going to understand wood 100%. You're never going to understand all the different things that can happen with some wood. And that's just wood. That's not talking about bleeding edge technology, right? That we have on Hedera saying, I know Hedera is going to be successful. I'm good. Made my investment. Now I just sit and wait. It's just going to be like Apple stock. No, no, nothing is ever going to be the, exactly the same as another thing. That's not how life works. You're never, you're, it's never a sure thing. And, and more importantly, like you just, you just don't want to think anymore. Let's be honest. 
you just want to be done. You don't want to, I, I know we all hate like that period when we first get into crypto and we're checking the price every second, like it matters. We yeah. want to get away from that. It's stressful. It's stressful to constantly be tuned into something that it's mental energy. I know you want to just be like, I bought the thing. I'm done. Right. But unfortunately, and you know, for the, for the greater good, you have a lot more power over this thing than you previously imagined. Right. Mm. Uh, the, that's the, that ties in the communication thing. It's a two way street. Like they have a lot of access to us. We have a lot of access to them. We have a lot of impact. Uh, if they raise us up, we can, we can raise the, this, them up. Like you're saying, use us. This ha we have one of the most unique communities I've ever been a part of. I've gone to a lot of different other smaller communities, never found anything as close as the level of talent Yeah. on Hedera. I mean, your show is a great example. It's, it's a fantastic example. Uh, you're doing this for free. Well, actually, just to clarify, I mean, I've I've got like thousands of dollars in donations from listeners to the show to a wallet, purchase the equipment, all that kind of stuff. So, it's oh, like, so retail's funding this too? Yeah, it huh. turns it turns out the, re, the retail's behind everything. It turns out there's only one person that can pay the bills around here. Interesting. <laughs> it's true. Interesting, huh? One, I wonder what it would be like if some of the money, right, that Hedera hbar foundation all these people throwing out was i don't know invested into some of the people in the community that are that are adding to it and marketing for you and creating content for you golly wouldn't that be something mm -hmm. who could imagine who could imagine it's already this good with completely on the back of donations from uh you know a beaten and abused community that's already having to lift the heavy heavy heaviest of bags that other people are just throwing into the wind uh and it makes a fantastic show like this could you only imagine if they put a little uh put a little of that money back into uh the system of the people that are creating that value wow wouldn't that be smart yeah. And I think that actually as well is the tough part is like, I have, you know, I've been very conscious with this show to not saying there like has or hasn't been any offers like that, but I like to, I like to shit talk Hedera and the foundation and swirls and all that kind of stuff. It's healthy. And it's like, it's, it also speaks to like the respect I have for a lot of those people. Um, I am a big believer that like, if, if, you know, nobody's freaking out at you. You're not doing anything of consequence. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't think a show like mine would be successful if it had support from the network. Cause at that point it's like, it's really hard to stay objective. I don't want the voice in the back of my mind. Like, uh, if you say the wrong thing, you, you might lose it or whatever. And it's like, also at the same point, it's like, I don't, like I don't get paid to do the show. I just, people donate and I can buy equipment like this stuff and everything like that. And, um, I've just at the, right now I've kind of just, um, stopped plugging the wallet because there, there's no, there's no more equipment or stuff the show needs right now. And I think that's also kind of the attitude we have to bring to things is like, it's okay to like have enough as well. Like it's okay to like, um, for, for this show, it's like, what is it actually about? And the show is actually about just being an enthusiast about Hashgraph. Like Hedera is the first network to be a Hashgraph network. Like there will be other Hashgraph based networks. Um, I'm excited about the Hashgraph technology. Like I'm in it for the tech. It's like, it's not called Hedera enthusiasts. I don't know how many Hedera enthusiasts there are now, but I think that there's so many Hashgraph enthusiasts. It is like at the core for me, I still do. I think the one, like one of the things that Hedera really got right is really illustrating this as like the third generation DLT. It's like, this is the new technology for DLTs, hash graph. Um, and we're still on kind of step two. How do we get that to people? And we're figuring that out right now. Um, so that's what I'm an, I'm, I'm an enthusiast in. And yeah, I think that for me, it's like, people say to me all the time, like, oh, they should be investing in your show and all this and that. And it's like, no, it is kind of cool that they don't, that it works without it. Um, and that's the whole, that's the whole dream for me is like really trying to explain to people that, as you said, just buy H bar and hold, it's like, no, how this works actually is the people who use the network come to control it. Um, that's how this space works. Uh, 
and we see that play out all the time for better or for worse but you can have a governing council you can have bylaws you can have all this type of stuff but the reality is if you got something really great the people who use it are going to control it eventually um right now it's retail using this stuff and the amount of control that retail has over Hedera now is immense. I don't think people in the community understand the power that this uh, retail community has. I don't think Hedera understands the power that it has, but we're watching that kind of play out in real time. And the, and I know that like, but you're not going to get retail on the governing council. You're not retail. Can't, you know, push changes to the network or whatever. It's like stuff changes. Right. And, and the network will be controlled by those putting transactions to the mainnet, to those using it, to those driving revenue. Like it might happen slowly, but that will happen. Um, and there, there's going to be enterprises starting to do that um, and maintaining that control of the network. I do think that that's kind of the one law that we just can't get around. The one human aspect to all of this is whether you like it or not to both retail and the governing council is like, the people who use this network will come to control it. There's just no way around that, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and, and that's what you want. Exactly. That's what, that's that's what you point. want to happen. That's the whole, whole point. point. To, yeah. You don't You don't want, we don't want to be Apple. Maybe you think you want to be Apple because you want to be a millionaire because you bought 10,000 H Uh We don't want to be Apple, right? We want to be Hedera. We want to be unique. We want to be what we're supposed to be right? We want to be decentralized. We want the, the network to, to, to be given over to the people. That's, that's what makes it different. We're not a fortune 500 tech company. I'm glad you can do this show, uh, without, you know, monetary support. Uh, and you know, that, that you have this amount of passion that, uh, you know, you, you want to keep doing it anyway. Like it's, and, it's, and, and I've got a full-time job in the ecosystem right. at HGraph. Like I'm doing okay. There is, there is room here to, to, to make things happen, you know, but there's a, there's other ways that they could support you. Like not financially. Uh, there's, there's other ways they could support you because you know, it's a value add, right? Here's yeah. the thing with content creation. You can be like, no, enterprise stuff just matters. Even if you think that you are getting money from enterprise, which it's the other way around, I ignoring that, assuming yeah. you don't know that. Um, if you want people to come here, if you want people to learn about this place, there has to be energy. Yep. When people currently come by and see what's going on Hedera, and I've, I've heard this from people, they're saying, what the hell's going on over there? What's wrong? I'm confused. What's wrong? Because all I see are angry people. Yeah. Uh, that's the wrong kind of energy. Mm. And uh, it ties back in the commu communication thing, like narratives will get away, get away from you. They'll run away from you if you don't take the responsibility to stay in clear and constant communication with your community. The three C's that I just made up right now, uh, you need, you have the ability to change that. And yeah. we want you to take that responsibility because we want things to be better. We, we have so much energy, so much pent up energy. Uh, you know, aggression, a lot of times aggression is just uh, energy that is not used in an efficient way, right? It's mm. bottled up. So, you know, just by the fact that we're freaking out, that we're, we're full to the brim of energy that could be used in productive mm -hmm. ways, if only you helped us direct it, right? Uh, and, and part of that is, is keeping your ears open uh, and keeping your, your hands deep into that, that soup, you know, <laughs> feel around in there. You know, like <laughs> get <laughs> grab hold of a potato or two. You know what I'm saying? Everybody does that when they make soup without exception. We all stick our hands into the hot pot and mm -hmm. try to grab a good old thick potato or two. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. The, the, like there is no better metaphor. Um, and I think that for me, um, maybe what we can do kind of, winding down this conversation is I think that maybe speak to something that I think is swirling around in people's minds of like, did I invest in the wrong network? Should I sell my H bar? Is, are the wheels falling off? What, what is going on? Um, what would you say to those people that I think over the last few weeks that maybe have become like really disenfranchised about this stuff, maybe fallen out of love in a way with Hedera, maybe feel a little lost. Maybe they're like, I don't even know where I fit into this thing anymore. I've been holding H bar, and it's just going down. 
what, what like what is going on like my you know my, my my parents are asking how their how their crypto portfolio is doing and uh like what would you say to those people that are just kind of like in in the all hope is lost uh mindset if all this stuff happening is making you think i should sell now you're an idiot That's what I would say, because this is the part where people know all the garbage that's been happening. This is the part where people are having conversations on how to fix things. This is the productive part, right? Uh, you should have sold when nobody was talking about this, but all this bad stuff was happening behind the scenes and nobody knew about it. This is not the time to sell, right? Not at all, because they may pretend like they're not listening. They may pretend like they're not paying attention, but they are. They have to be. And it's not just me. Other people are having these conversations too. It's not just me, this random weird guy who LARPs as a bald man with a speech impediment in his spare time saying these things. The words that are coming out of my mouth are coming from you guys. It's it's yeah. this zeitgeist, right? It's I'm not I'm not a genius. It's just, we're all feeling it. We can all feel it. The you know, unless they're completely tuned out, the people in Hedera, Swirl, all the different organizations, whatever, uh, they can feel it too. Yeah. This is not the time to sell. This is the time to get your hands in that soup because you can enact change. We're enacting change right now just by having this conversation. You can do it. Just, just get plugged in, right? Get active, get engaged, use that energy in a productive way. And things are going to get better. It's not going to be easy. There's a lot of things like systemically that were set up incorrectly. Um, but people will try to tell you this. They'll try to say there's nothing that can be done. Nope, we can't do that because of this. That's not a thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's not a thing. There's no, there's no company bylaws that can not be changed. Maybe it's hard. Maybe it takes a lot of people. Maybe it takes a big initiative. Maybe it takes everybody getting scared enough by the community freaking out to get on the same page. I yeah. don't know, but things can change. And more importantly, they are going to change. They are going to change. Things are gonna get better. Don't sell, relax a little bit. Um, if you are planning to hold your H bar and do nothing, go ahead and sell. I don't really care about you because you're not important and you've made it clear that your opinion doesn't matter because you're going to hold or not hold whatever anyway. You, you're not impacting the network at all. For the people who care, don't sell. Stick it in, dig in, and we're gonna we're gonna show this world some crazy shit. Grab that potato. Um, I think that's the best way to think about it. And and for me, um, my, I, I guess my final thought on this is like. There, like for for people familiar with like the the VC world and and kind of like the A16Z and the Y Combinator stuff. The founder of Y Combinator, Paul Graham, he had a he wrote an essay and he had a great quote in it where he said, um, "This industry works like a train, right? The technology train, and it leaves the station at regular intervals. That's just the way it's always worked." And what he says is that the situation normally functions like stuff just gets really bad, um, especially when there's recessions or inflation or whatever it might be, maybe macro factors, whatever, whatever it is. Before the train leaves, people kind of start getting off the train because they're scared and they start cowering in a corner. Um, and the, and the opportunity therein lies when the train leaves, like you might end up with a car all to yourself. If you stay on the train, that's the risk. If we talk about risk and reward, um, this is the risk part. This is, this is the tough part. This is the, you know, people go by the fear, all this kind of stuff. Like this is, this is the moment now. And, and it's really just up to your risk tolerance. It's like, um, you've got a crypto network that's pummeled by macro factors, just as every other network and is going through an identity crisis as other networks have done before. Now's your time to place your bets. Like this is the time now. Um, and I know where I'm placing my bets. Um, and I think that H bar is great because it's the, you know, protocol token to make things happen on the network, but there are so many other cool things that you can buy, um, that make money to buy more H bar. 
Like if it, like there, like there are like we talked about Brady earlier on the show with borrowing and lending. It's like, what happens if you take borrowing and lending away from the U S economy? It dies. You have to have these things. And so I think that what I would say to people that are just like so disillusioned and just like, I, I, I got to give up on this thing. It's going nowhere. What I would say is what you're experiencing is, is, is a vacuum, right? There's a vacuum right now. And if you're a founder, if you're someone with ideas, um, it, there's a lot of benefit to starting to build something in a, in a bad economy or a bad market. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and I mean, Lehman himself talks about this. Um, he talks about the dot com crash and, and all those things that happen. It's baked into the DNA of this network. There's also a component to me of like, we kind of just have to get back to some of those original things. Cause some of those do like, if like we can, we can poo poo Hedera and the governing council and stuff all day, but there are some core values here that we can rely upon the concept of like shared worlds, the concept of, you know, uh, multi-planetary nodes, um, all these di different types of things. It's like, it's like the new president of Adair Charles is talking about think bigger. Like when, when you feel the smallest, that's the really the time to think as big as possible. And so that's kind of, that's what I'd say to people right now is if you're that feeling you're feeling, that's the anxiety of like freedom. That's the anxiety of like possibility. That's the unknown uh, that's the, that's what it feels like when an era ends for something it's, there's something new that's going to happen that maybe is unfamiliar and strange, but that's where the opportunity lies. Like if you can stick it out, um, those are the people that get rewarded and get called lucky. Um, and every network has had this moment. Every single network has had this moment and the, and the, the networks that have managed to retain that. And, and I guess this is where now where, um, the ball lies in Hedera's court is what are you going to do? to retain this talent, this community, this energy? What are you going to do to keep this engine going? Um, and from what I see, flipping to the positive side, is I see a governing council over the last year that's gone, well, uh, I don't know if we have the best plan. Uh, we, I think we got to switch some stuff up. And I think a year is a very fair time period for um, a strategy to be outlined for a new direction. Like, that's totally fair. Uh, so I think that, a lot of people are putting a lot of their hopes in Charles. Um, I think that he can take the pressure. Um, although it was unfortunate to see, I don't know if you noticed this, but the the uh, the BlackRock stuff when he was like, a little bit of FUD? Oh, it's nothing. I used to get death threats at the reserve, at the Federal Reserve. <laughs> and then he tweets out well, a couple of weeks ago, like, guys, I'm getting death threats. I was like... I'm getting oh. them again. Yeah, I was like, oh, geez. But yeah, I think that we, on the community side... We, re we really got to, um, you know, maybe we are the soup. We are the soup. We're waiting for someone to reach out and grab our potato. Yeah, grab grab my potatoes. Yeah. You know, just, just get a handful. I may sound negative, but mostly it's because I actually love this network and the people on it, like, a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, a lot. Um, but also, I've, and this is true. I've never been more bullish on Hedera than these past three weeks. Yep. And that's a fact. I've never been, I've, I've never been more bullish on Hedera than these past three weeks. Yeah. And there's reasons for that. Yeah. It, and, and I'm the same too. And I think that both it's like you and I both have lots of conversations with different people and also just what I'll actually do real quick. Um, this is a great way to kind of wind down this conversation, but I think that, um, people might see us up here and like, God, these guys are going absolutely ballistic and I have no idea. What they're doing. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, but there was this great clip from the H bar bulls show, um, of Rob Allen, who is on the governing council. Um, and he touches on this stuff. And I think that this is a, this is an important clip. So let's, let's watch this real quick. And, and I think this is a great way to kind of hammer this home. And again, this is somebody on the governing council. I think that uh, the next six months will have a, a bit of a reset across Hedera. I think uh, we're at that point now where there is a lot of will and intent to ensure that we are fit. So 
you know, whatever that, that looks like, I believe that there is a, um, a real desire to ensure that the organizations that are partners within the Hedera ecosystem are fit for purpose for that. And that means kind of the governance and the, um, the ecosystem development and the engineering, all kind of um, making sure that it's um, super lean and super ready to, uh, to really drive into this, this kind of uh, next 12 or 18 months, which are, are likely to be a, an exciting ride. So we'll see that. I really, really hope that the community is engaged fully, that we're all pulling together, that we have the right uh, principles, the right Web3 principles embedded in all that we do. Um, I think that's essential, critical for the health of the Hedera ecosystem, which means listening to the community. It means building the developer community. It means um, transparency. And all the things that we kind of been hearing about recently, but have been hearing about for, for many, many years. So, you know, hearing and listening are different things. And we absolutely need to listen to all those voices. I think we've only got those six months really to, uh, to get that right. Probably a deeper, deeper answer than the, uh, the questioner, um, intended or maybe not. But that my personal view is that, that we're at that point where we have to in kind of inflect into, what well, Mance actually called Hedera 2.0 when we were in New York. You know, this is the new phase of Hedera. There are uh, many things happening. Uh, there's quite a lot of friction because of it. And it's the time to now uh, make sure that this, uh, this ecosystem is fit to be the, you know, to continue to be the, the best in class in all that we do. Where are the meeting minutes? <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, like the meeting minutes are late or whatever, but I mean, like if our, if the conversations on the show today and then seeing that clip of Rob Allen, like doesn't show people that like, this is just literally a fact that these are things that have to happen. It's like, you got to strap in. It does it, it, like Rob Allen literally references Mance in New York saying Hedera 2.0. Like that is the definition of beginning a new era. Right. That like in software development, you've got, you know, something dot something dot something. That first digit is a, something called a breaking change. Right. That means that something has to break. Um, it's like a muscle. Got to break it down to rebuild. It's like we are breaking down right now. And I think we can all feel it. Um, but that's part of it. Like that's that's really that's really part of it. It's the it's the potato breaking down in the soup. It's all becoming something delicious, hopefully. Um, and it's just a matter of time before someone reaches in and grabs potato, but that's, that's, that's it. That's what it is about on my mind is just accepting realities. And it's like, if someone, if someone doesn't understand that, the, that a literal governing council member saying these exact same things, if at that point they don't go, huh, maybe there's something to this retail thing. I don't know. Like you're fucked at that point. <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta just floor it and get out of here. <laughs> you're not going to like what's next. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, Jake, like I, I very much appreciate you stopping by and, and in all seriousness, like your, your insights and dedication to the community is like so important. I don't know um, what, what we do without you and, and, and uh, what you're doing with the Guelph project and um, everything like that. I mean, uh, the definition of dedication is coming on this show and doing the Grelf voice for over an hour and a half. Like that's like, that's what it really boils down to. Those are, it's the small stuff. It's the little guy. It's the, st those are the things, it's the details. Those are the things that are going to bring the network forward. So really, really appreciate you, man. And everything you do in the ecosystem. No, I mean, and same to you. I, you know, I, I love the show. Uh, of course I love being on it and, um, yeah, it's not just two two wackos <laughs> saying a bunch of stuff they don't know anything about. Okay, uh, yeah. you know I don't know how much legitimacy I bring to the table, but uh, you know we got Rob there backing us up, exactly. and uh, you know let's make that soup. Let's do it. Hell let's yeah, it. let's do it. All right, don't well, wear gloves. No gloves. <laughs> We're raw dogging that soup. <laughs> We're raw dogging it. We're gonna get all sorts of arm hair in there. 
<laughs> okay, man. I again super appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day, and then I'm gonna try to get through a couple other news stories here. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs>